Okay, so we're here with uh, Dawn Landis, who's out touring right now to support her new record, Bluebird. Um, and Dawn, thanks for coming by. Thanks for having me. Um, t I w was curious about how you got started playing the guitar, and you know, you grew up in Kentucky, is that mm -hmm, right? Mm -hmm. And wh well, what was the what was the thing that kind of got you first going on music? Hmm. Well, I was always singing songs and making up songs. I took piano lessons as a kid, and I remember uh, I, I was singing in a band in high school and I really wanted to learn how to play the guitar, but I didn't want to suck. I didn't want all my guy friends and, to know that I was terrible, so I started secretly taking lessons, and I didn't tell anyone that I was playing for about a year. Uh -huh. And then suddenly I was like, oh yeah, check this out. Mm -hmm. <laughs> but uh, Danny Flanagan taught me guitar lessons in Louisville, and he's a great songwriter from, from Kentucky. And, that was just really fun, and I bought a guitar from an ex-boyfriend for a dollar. Yep, because he, he wanted to give it to that me, and I refused. Martin I was like, I need to pay for this. Here, here's a dollar. But I paid for it. You, you play a Blue Ridge I here. I do, and, yeah. And what, what about those guitars appeals to you? I love these guitars. Um, I bought this. There's a guy, Rick Kelly, who has a, a shop, Carmine Guitars, in New York, and I've bought a few guitars from his, his shop. And uh, Blue Ridge is a very affordable guitar, and it looks great, and it stays in tune, and it's, I love the inlays. Yeah, I, don't, I really like these guitars. I think they're really good. Okay, this song's called Bluebird.
you eventually started doing lots of studio work, mm -hmm. um, and you were a studio engineer for people like Philip Glass. And yeah, yeah. Um, what what got you in, into that, you know, part of the business? I was really well. I mean, everybody who writes songs wants to record them, I think, and and so I was experimenting with four tracks and everything in high school, and then I when I moved to New York to go to college, I wanted to do a demo and. You know, just having to rely on other people and not knowing the vocabulary to talk to them about sounds and everything was really frustrating for me. Mm -hmm. So I just decided to learn as much about it as I could, and then I just got obsessed with recording. I, you know, it's an obsession, like to right. just layer sounds, and and I'm I've always loved production and like dissecting a song and figuring out what's in it, and so it just seemed really natural, and I I just kind of I got an internship at Philip Glass's studio and that kind of started me and then I just worked in studios for, you know, I've been working, in, I own my own studio with some other people now and it's just a lifelong obsession, I think. Is there a secret or a way that one should record an acoustic guitar? Gary yeah. Maurer was a mentor, is a mentor of mine and um, whenever I do a session, um, I like to have a small diaphragm condenser, something like this, like a Sheps is my absolute favorite and, or a PM860 is one of my favorite mics. Gefell. Um, but the trick is you put it on the 12th fret. You usually put it like around here and you angle it, not, not too close to it, but aim for the 12th fret and kind of angle it a little bit like this. Mm -hmm. That's my favorite sound. And then if you want like a bigger sound, you put like a larger diaphragm condenser further back so you get like the roomy sound. That's my favorite way of recording an acoustic guitar. Mm -hmm. 